Ah, yes. The wonderful sounds of Bob Marley. Alright, this is Tom Tresher with the opening uh, week of the new class for the Great Cities Institute's nonprofit management program, uh, Nonprofits and Civic Engagement. I'm Tom Tresser, and I'm going to be your uh, online host and instructor for this class. So we're going to talk about civic engagement and how nonprofits fit into that construct in this class. But first, a little bit about my own background and point of view. I have been working in Chicago in civic engagement for over 20 years. Um, most recently, I uh, ran for public office. And here's an artifact from that campaign. I was the Green Party candidate for Cook County Board President in 2011 and ran on a platform of reform, creativity, and social justice. Before that, I was a volunteer with this organization, No Game Chicago. Um, we worked uh, throughout most of 2009 uh, to stop the 2016 Olympics from coming to Chicago. And that was a, a grassroots effort uh, from across the city that um, tried to develop a different picture of what uh, Chicago might look like if the games had come here. Um, and I've spent a lot of time thinking and working in uh, grassroots efforts. One of the questions I have for this class and for other thoughtful people in this field is how to make politics interesting. Uh, we just had a Super Bowl here, um, uh, you know, in Indianapolis, not too far away from Chicago, and of course the whole world went crazy for it. Uh, record numbers of people watching it and um, dominated, you know, news coverage for quite some time. And the question is how can we make civic life, uh, you know, getting involved in public life as fun as dynamic, as exciting as uh, the Super Bowl. Is it even possible? Well, I have to say that the news is not good. So I'll throw some numbers at you. In uh, 2006, the Zogby polling organization did a survey of adults across America asking them some questions about their civic knowledge. The results were embarrassing. Uh, just asking on the question of what are the three branches of government, you can say them silently to yourself right now, only 42% of U.S. adults could answer that question correctly. But when the same group was asked <laughs> to name the three stooges, 74% of America knew the answer to that. Um, more people knew who Harry Potter was than knew who the Prime Minister of England were, and so forth and so on. It's too depressing to dwell on. An organization called the National Conference on Citizenship is very concerned with uh, issues of civic health, and they produced this document, uh, Civic Health Assessment of America. And uh, again, if you read between the lines, the news is not great. In 2008, 57% of Americans 18 years and old voted. 15% um, uh, donated money or supported a candidate. 10% mm, contacted an elected official. And 3% attended some sort of march, rally, or protest. Well, maybe if they did that survey again now, <laughs> that number might be up a tick. Uh, what with the uh, protests all around the country uh, against the war or against... Uh, Wall Street's greed. All right, so that's the national numbers, but, um, you know, I'm based in Chicago, Illinois. Um, you may be looking at this uh, broadcast and this, taking this class from virtually anywhere in the world, but the place that I know best is here in Illinois, and we have a particular set of problems around civic engagement. You can believe it. Well, here's two headlines that are very sad to share with you. This one from a few years ago. Uh, Ryan guilty, the Ryan being 
the governor of the t at the time. This is from 2006, so he was the Republican governor. Before that, he was the Secretary of State. Um, over 70 people were indicted and convicted of various kinds of fraud in the license for bribes scandal. Uh, to our everlasting shame, you would have thought that people in power would have learned something from that very sorry incident, but unfortunately, we share this headline with you from just a few years later. The next governor that we elected, Rod Bogoyevich, arrested, convicted of 14 counts of fraud and other malfeasance, 2011. Uh, that headline was from. And so um, apparently <laughs> he learned nothing. And now we've had the distinction of having five governors of this state go to jail. Well, the same uh, organization, the uh, the National Conference on Citizenship, take a look at uh, civic health at the state and city levels. And uh, so this document here is the state of Illinois' civic health from 2010. And again, I'd say for such a large, wealthy um, state with so much going for it, we kind of suck at civic engagement. We're 33rd in the nation for voter registration. We're 37th in voter turnout. And we're 27th in terms of volunteering. Now, again, Chicago, Illinois is um, one of the 10 wealthiest states. So I don't know if you should, if you believe that these things should line up. The more resources you have, the more you should be involved in civic life. Maybe it's actually should be the other way. Maybe the poorer you are, you should, the more you should be involved in civic life. But in any case, our rankings are pretty dismal. Uh, the same organization, as I say, also took a look at. Chicago, and this document is Chicago's Civic Health Index from 2010. And we do only slightly better than our parent state. Uh, if your family has a $75,000 income or more, you have a 76% voter turnout probability. If you make less than 35000 then your turnout goes down to 67%. Uh, we're 38th of the 51 largest cities in terms of volunteering. Um, and 22% uh, engage in some sort of social uh, uh, political activities connected with politics. The national average is 26%. So I think there's a lot of room for growth in all those numbers. And what are the consequences, you, you might ask, of not being engaged in civic life? Well, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, but I'll show you one more artifact. That's this folder right here. Uh, it's about, oh, I don't know, four inches thick. Sounds pretty hefty. The title of this folder is The Cost of Corruption, and it's only part of the documentation that I've been keeping over the last few years on the costs of when your government is incompetent, crooked, um, or out of function, you know, dysfunctional. Uh, the costs are, are huge and repetitive. There's a monetary cost. That is to say, a dollar spent for employees who don't show up or who are hacks or who are crooks, dollars that are stolen. Um, but then there's a huge opportunity cost. You know, America is facing, the world is facing pretty grave, intractable problems. Some people say government is the problem. I don't personally believe that. I think government can work, but you need honest, smart people in government, people who are driven by a sense of passion and service. And so uh, if your government is dysfunctional or incompetent, this opportunity costs are things that could have been solved but were not solved. Problems that were around getting worse instead of getting better. And that's real human cost. It's just not a dollar cost. And it extends to whatever field or topic or issue that you might be involved in from what, whatever uh, level of government, whether it's health care, homelessness, education, parks and recreation, culture, all those things are touched by local and regional governments. And if they're not working for the people, then um, they're, they are part of the problem. So um, in this class, let's take a look at these issues. And while we're doing so, here's a challenge to you. Ask yourself, 
where are you in those numbers? Are you civically engaged? Um, and how do you approach your own role in civic life? My guess is that if you're taking this class, you're already a leader. Uh, you're already working um, stoutly and resolutely and hardly and, and um, diligently in the nonprofit world. But you may think that that's all it takes to be a good citizen, to be a good uh, civic engagement player. But hopefully through this class, we'll show you that that's really just the start of your, of your role in civic life. Okay? All right. So I look forward to um, meeting everyone online. And this is Tom Tresser uh, for the University of Illinois at Chicago's Great Cities Institute saying, I'll see you online.